Recently, I've been doing some mixing, production and mastering workshops here in London and I've had the chance to meet quite a few of you, quite a few Cubase users. And one thing that I realized was that even some proficient Cubase users, some really professional users, are not aware of some plugins that we have inside Cubase that are really amazing because nobody talks about them. So I wanted to make this video because I want to talk about some unsung hero plugins that we have inside Cubase. So without any further ado, let's start with the first plugin that I think you should stop ignoring when it comes to Cubase stock plugins. And the first plugin is called Step filter so here you go this is step filter and step filter is one of these plugins that has been around for ages i mean i remember the previous user interfaces and it used to look very very different but in every cubase version there was something new that was added and it made this plugin really powerful but because it was a plugin that has been there for ages not many people took notice and many cubase users have forgotten about this plugin so let me show you how it's I'm going to solo this synth part here and I'm going to play it without the step filter. Okay, very boring. Now, let's say I want to add a little bit of animation to this. I'm going to activate step filter and check what we can do here. As you can see, we have a cutoff here, so we can have steps of cutoff frequency and resonance. So I can do stuff like this. I can go and do something like this. I can just hover my mouse, click and drag, and it's very, very easy to use. Now, in this video, I'm not going to do a review of uh, all these plugins that I'm going to show you. But if you're interested, let me know if I get enough requests. I might make a dedicated video for the plugins that I'm going to show you here today. But let me play this through Step Filter. So I can change the rate. Okay, let's try the glide now. So as you can see, just by playing with the parameters, I can get so many interesting, funky, evolving, swirly sounds. And this is a plugin that honestly, I've seen very, very few people using it, but just because it's a stock plugin doesn't mean it's not good. It's actually very good. The filter sounds really nice. Check this out. That's a nice sounding filter. So very easy to use. Like I said, I can do stuff like this, for example. So it can be rhythmic, but don't let the step filter name for you this can be very smooth but you can make it very steppy if you want to and of course you can uh, mix you can create different patterns and you can mix and match between different patterns very very powerful let me know if you want me to make a dedicated video about step filter and many people rush to buy a uh, third-party plugins sometimes but in Cubase we have some really powerful ones so until you explore these I would suggest you know hold on to your cash check out what's in there, and then if you feel that you need something more, then by all means, go and buy a third-party plugin. I have many third-party filter plugins. Arturias and the PSPs are some of my favorites, but, you know, try out the things that you have inside your DAW first. That's my suggestion, as always. The next plugin I want to talk about is Mod Machine, and this is a super creative plugin, especially if you spend a little bit of time learning it. Again, if you want a video, let me know, but you have to let me know in the comments down below. If I see one comment, I understand you're not interested, so I might not make a video. But if you're interested, let me know. 
This is a really, really powerful plugin. It really gives you a lot of flexibility because it's a delay, but it's also a modulation machine. Uh, basically, it allows you to create some really nice, wobbly, uh, crazy effects. Let me give you an example with this vocal. You know that you can never fail me. You only got one life to nail and you don't have to be so low key, baby. True, you need to fake it until you make it. You know that you can never fail me. You only got one life to nail it, and you don't have to be so low key, baby. True, you need to fake it until you make it. You know that you can never fail me. You only got one life to nail so it. The nudge parameter, uh, if I click on this button, I get some really interesting vinyl style effects. Life to nail it. And you don't have to be so low key, baby. True, you need to fake it until you make it. You know that you can never fail me. You only got one life to nail it. And you don't. You don't. So very creative plugin. Again, if you just try some of the presets, you'll be inspired. I can guarantee that. Don't miss on that. The third plugin that I think you shouldn't ignore when it comes to Cubase stock plugins is the mighty multi-tap delay. Now, I cannot be more honest with you if I say that if you learn to use the multi-tap delay in Cubase, you'll be really hard pressed to justify buying a third party delay plugin unless you're looking for a specific sound. Now, the multi-tap delay has everything. You can change the character, you can have tape, you can have multi-taps, spread them left and right, you can have parameters for each tap, so you can have loop effects that apply to the delay loop, you can have tap effects, so you can say, okay, I want to add a different effect for every tap, and these effects can include all these things that I'm showing you here. So chorus, phaser, envelope filter, beat crusher, and so on and so forth. I've actually done a full video on how to use the multi-tap delay. Check it out right here if you're interested. I'm going really deep into this. So for this, you don't have to ask for it. I've already made a video. Uh, you can watch it after watching this one. And then we also have the post effects. So very, very quickly, I'm going to play this vocal again here and I'm going to add it and I'm going to show you how it sounds because what I've done here is I've added two taps and I've made sure that on the loop effects, I have a pitch shifter. So I'm creating this really interesting format effect for my delay. And then I'm running this delay to a reverb. So so many different things. Let's have a listen. You know that you can never fail me. You only got one life to nail it. And you don't have to be so low key, baby. True, you need to fake it until you make it. You know that you can never fail me. You only got one life to nail it. And, and of course, it has a darker and everything. It has pretty much everything you need. You can even design your delays by pressing this sample sound. And you can hear how the delay works. I can guarantee this delay is all you need for most of the part, okay? I still have lots of third-party delay plugins because I'm looking for a specific sound, but now there might be a chance small chance that you might be enjoying this video and you might be finding this useful. If you do, please do me a solid and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already or hit the like button. This also helps. And if you really, really found this useful, hit the super thanks button. It will really help the channel. And if you're interested, check out my instruments, the Modern 80s Drum Kit and the Apollo Expansion for Pat Shop. This way you're supporting the channel. This video is not sponsored, but I want to spread the Cubase love to all of you guys. I love you. Let's move on to the next plugin, which is, again, an unsung hero. This is called Cloner, and this plugin is an automatic uh, double tracker that we have in Cubase. This allows you to take one single vocal or any other source material and basically do all these tricks that we do to make a vocal sound wider. So duplicate it, detune left and right, and delay the four duplicates so that you can get 
a really wide signature pop sound. Let's have a listen. I'm going to start with it all the way off and then I'm going to turn it up and you can see what it does. You know that you can never fail me. You only got one life to nail it. And you don't have to be so low-key, baby, true. You need to fake it until you make it. You know that you can never fail me. You only got one life to nail it. And you don't have to be so low-key, baby, true. You need to fake it until you make it. You know that you can never fail me. You only got one life to nail it. So you can see how it sounds and again you can tune each voice individually in terms of detune and delay so you can get a really really wide sound if you wanted to do this um you know by just duplicating your channels in cubase and detuning them it would take quite a bit of work but this allows you to do this straight with one plugin so again unsung hero really powerful tool again many people reach out to third party solutions straight away Cloner sounds really nice, and unless you're looking for a very, very specific sound, uh, I already have some plugins in mind, you know, you don't have to look anywhere else. And the last plugin that I want to talk about today is the Envelope Shaper. Now, this plugin, I've lost count on how many times I've seen, uh, you know, Cubase users trying to find a Transient Designer kind of plugin, and they spend a lot of money actually on plugins that do this. Don't get me wrong, I also have quite a few plugins that do this. I mean, Spiff is one of my favorites and some other ones, but that's only because they give me a different sound to what Envelope Shaper gives me. It's not that Envelope Shaper is a bad plugin. It's actually a great plugin, and I'm going to show you straight away how well it works. So I'm going to have this kick drum here, and I'm going to show you how well it works if you want to add a little bit of punch to the kick drum, or if you want to shape the release on how long the kick drum will be. I use this all the time on kick drums, on snares, on percussion. Have a listen. Okay, let's say I want to add a little bit of attack. I can change the length of the attack. And now the release. So let's say I want to make the kick drum longer or make it shorter, which is actually what I do most of the times. I want to make it tighter. So again, without. And let's listen in the context of the mix. You know that you can never fail me You only got my life to nail it And you don't have to be so low-key, baby, true You need to fake it until you make it So if you have a weak kick drum, this is the solution. And there's also the multi-band envelope shaper that I've talked about many times. But for elements that have been recorded with, uh, let's say, multiple microphones, I would always choose to go for the single band envelope shaper because it retains the phase and you won't have any phase problems. So don't underestimate the envelope shaper. It's an extremely powerful plugin and it can really save the day in many, many situations. And you know what? If you're still watching, I have a bonus plugin for you that I think that many people forget it exists in Cubase. And this is the Humble Test Generator. It's a really useful plugin, uh, not only because it allows you to test things. I use it a lot for testing analog equipment. I use it a lot for testing, you know, left and right relationships between channels after I run it through a piece of analog gear, especially a tube uh, equipped analog uh, piece, because these tend to make your left and right channels drift a little bit. So this is a very easy way to figure out if something is happening. So what it does, it's very simple. You can run a sine wave. You can change the frequency if you want to. You can actually test your speakers like this. You can start with something like really low, let's say, um, I don't know, maybe 30 hertz, something like this. And then go, I'm going to make sure I lower the volume for this one. You know, all the way up you can select the level and you can also change the waveform. So you can choose from sine wave, triangle, square, sawtooth, 
and then white, pink and brown noise. So I might be talking a lot about plugins in my channel uh, because I just love them. I love trying new things. I love trying new plugins. I'm fascinated by this, but my suggestion always remains the same. Learn the plugins that you have inside your DAW first and then invest on third party plugins. Figure out what you want to do that the stock plugins cannot do for you and then you can think about getting a third party plugin that you might need that will give you a specific sound. I've done many videos about Cubase stock plugins but also plugins that I think that would be a great addition for Cubase users. Check them out here if you're interested. Bye bye.